Hi, I'm Big Lou, and this is Jelly Plate Printing 101. Um, today we're going to be sticking to basics and being a, a little bit creative um, and the little tips and tricks on how to do jelly plate printing. And I'm going to start off by saying, just like what other people I have learned from have said, uh, in regards to jelly plate printing, jelly plate printing is not something that comes to you within a few seconds. It takes a lot of practice, a lot of mess ups, a lot of disappointments. A lot of times you just want to take your jelly plate and just throw it across the room and say, I can't believe I wasted all this money. However, it is based on a feel and a technique that you end up developing working with these jelly plates. Now, you can make your own jelly plate, which is fine, but I purchased my jelly plate online. I bought it on uh, Amazon, and this is a nine inches by 14 inches jelly plate. Uh, through the course of time, if you look at your jelly plate on an angle, you'll see that it starts to develop some kind of scarring, or it it, it is like skin in a, in a way. You know, if you harm, the jelly plate, it's going to leave a scar, which over time, mine has got what they call fish eyes, which are like circle indentations from maybe pressing too heavy or hard on something or leaving something on there to dry. And when you pull your paper back, it leaves like a ridge or something. But I actually like the scars on my jelly plate. I don't usually take care of it very well. Uh, after using it, most of the time I leave paint on this thing. So this way, next time I use my jelly plate, it'll just transfer over whatever remaining paint is on there. But when you do buy these things, keep in mind, I mean, like I said, they are expensive and they can range anywhere from $24 to $140, depending which one you get and what size and what company. Uh, they do have them on Timu and they do have them on Amazon as well as Michael's uh, Art Supplies, or um, you can go to Hobby Lobby, but Hobby Lobby tends to be a bit of a ripoff. Uh, nothing is priced correctly. You'll have one jelly plate that's selling for 60 bucks and one behind it that's selling for $190. The pricing is all screwed up in Hobby Lobby. But uh, you can go online if you search jelly plate, that's G-E-L-L-I, P-L-A-T-E, Jelly Plate, okay? And do not, on Timu, they do have something that looks like a jelly plate, but it's actually a hard silicone base that you would put your jelly plate on top of. Um, and they sell them rather cheap, so don't get misdirected, you know, because you might be thinking you're getting a big jelly plate for six bucks, but meanwhile, you're just getting a silicone hard plate that you would stick your jelly plate to. Now I'm sticking my jelly plate to the plastic that came with it in its packaging. Normally it comes with one of these clear plastic sheets and there's one on the back, one on the top. I had actually taped uh, a piece of paper. This is a nine by four, uh, no, this is a, a uh, no, it's not nine by 14. This is probably uh, the paper. I use mixed media paper. So mixed media paper is the paper that I use uh, when using jelly plate printing. And I created a border on here also. I just, I did it on the actual paper. So on the paper, I just drew out a border. So I know when I'm laying out my ink that I should be somewhere within the vicinity of my border. You don't need to have a border. I just choose to do a border on mine. Now what is jelly plate printing basically? All you're doing really is applying acrylic paint, a heavy, thick, viscous acrylic paint. Now there's certain acrylic paints that work with jelly plating and some that do not. Now, Liquitex is a company that I'm very familiar with because being an art student back in the day, I used to use this and this is ivory black and it's usually a little bit more cost effective. Now, I don't usually have a lot of luck using Liquitex paint. I don't know what it is, but certain companies work well with jelly plate printing, and this is not one of them. 
okay? Uh, I bought this big tube. Uh, I forgot. I think I spent about $18 on this tube, which is pretty expensive. This is a uh, 8.45 fluid ounces or 250 milliliters. So it is a big, heavy tube. Unfortunately, I cannot use it. What I have found the luck with is Amsterdam. Amsterdam has been highly successful with jelly plate transferring. So if you're out there buying paint and you're like, I wonder which acrylic paint I should get, black oxide, oxide black acrylic by Amsterdam works amazing for your first layer of paint that you put on here that you're going to transfer an image onto here. Now, I've had a lot of luck with this, and, I, and this I spent like two bucks on this little tube. This is, uh, I'm not sure how many fluid ounces this is, but it, it's, it's one of their smaller sample tubes. So it's 20 milliliters or 0 0.7 fluid ounces. So it's a tiny little tube, and I spent like two bucks at, on these. And I got a variety of colors just to see, you know, if I like using these colors and if you buy a box of them they have a box of these small sample ones for like 18 bucks you get like you know eight colors basically you know and it's nice and then you know you go to the art store and you start picking out other colors off the rack that you would like i only got the small ones as samples just to see how well they work with the jelly plate and then eventually i'll come back to the art store and i will buy more paint but in larger sizes uh, what I have done, however, I did buy a 24 ounce uh, bottle of Amsterdam black oxide acrylic paint and I put it in this squeezy tube. It's almost like a ketchup dispenser, you know, it's a squeeze bottle. And this is uh, 8.4 fluid ounces and it's 250 milliliters. I like this because I have more control laying this acrylic down on a jelly plate okay i love having control okay not having control is chaos so what i'm going to go ahead and do today is today we're going to go over a few things right uh, when you first get a jelly plate there is maintenance on how to clean it before you use it oil it up some people use baby oil on their jelly plates to clean them up and also maintain them I don't usually maintain. I just use, believe it or not, baby wipes. I get flushable baby wipes, or you can get any kind of baby wipe in general, and just use the baby wipe to wipe down the surface to clean all the paint off of it. Uh, and then that's it. Then let it air dry. Don't use, uh, you can use a microfiber so you don't leave any lint behind. But if you use a, um, for let's just say you use any type of, um, you know, paper towels or like toilet paper. It's going to leave lint behind. And this is a very, very sticky plate, okay? And it's not sticky to my hand so much, but if I decide I'm going to put a piece of magazine on it, it does stick. Even if it's just kind of just sitting there, it sticks really well to it. So that means when you lay paint on here, when you put acrylic paint, there's a couple of mistakes newbies always make. One is not having enough control with their brayer. This is a brayer, okay? A brayer you could find on Amazon also, or most art supplies, you could find a brayer. This was what was used to do newspaper and um, inking uh, metal letters and numbers for people on printing presses. So what they would do is they would uh, get ink, like they would get a uh, paint or, you know, they would get acrylic paint. They put it in a dish and they go back and forth with the brayer to coat the whole brayer with the ink. And then they have their newspaper with all the little metal numbers and letters laid out and they would pass the brayer over it. And then they would uh, they'd have their printing press where the paper would come over, it would go on top of the letters and numbers, and it would go literally in a, in a squeezing vise that put pressure completely down on it, and then they removed the vise, and then they peeled the page back, and then they had a newsprint, basically. So brayers have a long history um, in advertising or in the art world. I mean, people use these, but it's funny that we use it for this, for... Um, for this whole style and 
I dig it. Now you can buy cheaper ones on Amazon or at Michael's or wherever. This is a cheap one I bought and you can see it's been through a lot of different colors and um, when the acrylic has a tendency to dry on here, if I don't clean it, you know, it'll have a tendency to dry. And when it does dry, it actually, I have to scrape it off because it's very hard to get it off the acrylic paint once it's on there. Now, when it's fresher, it's easy to take a baby wipe and wipe it off. But if you leave it for a couple of days or even like five, six days, that paint's on there. So I just take a razor and I scrape the brayer. And I don't mind if I dig, if I dig into the brayer or anything like that because to me, that's just more texture. I like texture. And texture is cool. The reason why texture is cool is because dare to be different. I don't want anything to have a photographic result. I want it to be different. I want it to be abstract. I want to be different. Anything that if I can do one thing on here and then I create one project, I don't want to create the same exact thing twice. I want it to be one of one and that's it. So I'm going to dive in. I'm going to go ahead and take my acrylic here. This is my Amsterdam oxide black. And I'm working sideways. The reason why I'm working sideways is because my art teachers back in the day always used to tell me, step back and look at your artwork. See what you got. So I'm doing a fine line. Not, not too much paint. It's a very small line of paint. I'm just going to take my brayer, go back and forth, and just coat the whole brayer right on the jelly plate. Now you don't want to soak your jelly plate with ink. That's a big no-no. You don't want ink everywhere. You don't want acrylic everywhere. You don't want a thick, thick layer. You want it to be borderline transparent. Okay, borderline transparent. And I'm just going back and forth here, making sure I coat everything. But if you go too long, what can happen is the acrylic it actually dries pretty quick. So you gotta be mindful that if it is drying quick, it's gonna be a big oopsie moment, okay? So, I'm gonna push this aside. I have a laser copied uh, image from a fashion magazine. And we have this also. So I'll do this side. I'll lay that down, use my hand. You could even use a brayer to make sure it has 100% contact. Roll it out. Don't use a lot of pressure because you don't want the page to start to wrinkle. If the page starts to wrinkle, then you got a problem. I'm gonna peel this back. There's our model, just like that. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this so you guys can see. There's our model. So now I'm gonna let this dry, okay? It doesn't take too long to dry. And I do have a border where the magazine did not lift the ink. You could leave that border on there if you like certain textures or certain looks. I'm just gonna take my baby wipe, go right on the jelly plate and wipe that off. Because this was just a demonstration test. We're gonna do a project after I pull this one. I got a project in mind and we're gonna do it and we're gonna do it right on this broadcast. There we go, just clean it up. Now looking at the image, this girl, I think she had a shaved head. <laughs> Let me see, if I look at the original, no, yeah, she had a shaved head. So her head kind of disappears slightly, but we got her hands, her hands are in there and the gown is in there and the tips of her toes are in there, but her head just kind of disappears, you know, the top of her head. So I'm going to add some other things in here. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and add maybe these twins. What I'll do is I'll, uh, I like to be different. I'm going to grab my razor blade. I'm going to cut the twins apart. I'm 
Okay. So I cut the twins apart. Now, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to put the twins and incorporate them on here too. Still see I left some ink on here from my uh, baby wipe. Just wipe that away. Just see. It's not tacky, the paint anymore. So the paint had already dried, so that's good. Now, I don't like perfect fine edges, so I'm just going to tear around these guys. And I know it's acrylic paint, but I just keep referring to it as ink. So don't mind my terminology. I'm just going to add a little bit more here. Nothing crazy. Just a little more. Just to put these guys in here. And I laid that out. Take my brayer. Taking my brayer, rolling that image down because I'm going to get ready to peel them, and then I'll clean up afterwards. Okay, go ahead and peel. I got a partial. And listen, we're not seeking perfection at, at, at any point whatsoever. I don't look for perfection. I'm not a perfectionist. I'm not looking to gain perfection on any point whatsoever. I'm simply looking to do something different. So what? I didn't get all of his face. Big deal. This is all experimentation. It's just we're here just to see what we can do, what we can accomplish, and how we can make this work. Okay? Always keep in mind, there's no grade on this, except Except trolls online. People will troll. But people have nothing better else to do sometimes. Some people are just used to trolling. That's all they do is troll. Now this guy's going to dry soon because he didn't have a lot of ink. This guy, I can see there's still some wet spots there. No pun intended. So we're going to actually keep him there. Now I'm going to add, let's add, a, I don't know, some font, some text. Just right on him. Right on him. I'm going to add some, some lettering. Because his paint is still wet. Just for the hell of it. Why not? I can do whatever I want. There we go. He's still there. Now I put some lettering in there. Now, this is my paper I use. This is mixed media. It's pretty thick. It's not too thick. It's not like water watercolor paper, but it's heavier than sketch paper, that's for sure. But they call it mixed media. I like it. Uh, I think it's 60 pound or something like that. Uh, I'm not really sure. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll get the book in a moment. I'll show you what, what, what it is, basically. But this is made by Artist Loft, and they also make uh, acrylic paint also. Uh, Artist Loft is pretty good. Uh, it's a little on the looser end, on a more liquid base of the... Um, acrylic paint so it's a little on the light side however still a pretty good paint okay so i'm gonna go ahead it's pretty cool they almost look ghost like you know and i can still go in there and mess around if i want like i can go in here and i can add some texture if i want so i can put a little bit of paint right here and just go across then i'll grab my brayer let me pull this up so you can see it that's where i put the paint Put my brayer over here because I'm thinking about adding some texture down here and I'm trying not to interfere with the models but I want to add some texture there and some up here 
right by their heads. Okay, so now, you know what? I might even take something better, let's see. I'm gonna take, what could I put over there? I could put something over there. Uh, you know what? Let's put some bubble wrap. Okay, bubble wrap down here. Okay, so we got some cool texture there and there. Now, is it necessary to put texture down there? Is it necessary to put texture up here? No, but why not? Who cares? Who's watching? People may not even be watching this video for all I know, but I'm always going to try and do something different. I always like doing things differently. So, and the next project we're going to do is definitely different. So I like it. So still a little drying time needed there still, but not to worry. This is cool. What we're going to do is we're going to do something pretty cool now. So I'm going to grab some white. Well, you know what? What do you guys think? Do you think that maybe I should do blue? A blue background? Maybe two different blues. Yeah, we could do two different blues. This one is called Primary Cyan. And this one is Turquoise Blue. Turquoise Blue is nice because this is like Tiffany Blue. And this is Primary Cyan. So we'll just use two different blue colors and see how it comes out. I'm okay with that. So now, it's okay if you go a little heavy with this paint, but the more paint you use, the more drying time that's needed. And you don't want to wait around 16 hours for your paint to dry. Nobody wants to do that.